And we treat those particles as though they really are the absolute most elementary particles in the universe. But actually, we now know that's not true. Hey, everybody, Professor Davis here from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel Chem Survival. And today was an exciting day for me. I got my first question from a viewer of my new course, Understanding the Periodic Table, available at wondrium.com. Uh, now, uh, Ken is uh, obviously taking a look at lecture six, uh, during which we discuss uh, nuclear radiation. And he asks uh, an interesting question. Uh, during the discussion on beta radiation, uh, we talk about how electrons are emitted from the nucleus during beta radiation. And Ken has a very good question. His question is, aren't electrons in the cloud of the atom around that nucleus? And how could an electron then originate from the nucleus? And in order to answer this question, we have to dig a little bit deeper into subatomic structure than we do uh, in this lecture of the course. So let's do a little bit of that right now. Um, now, atoms were generally uh, accepted in about the early 1800s, their existence. Uh, but at the time, it was thought atoms were sort of like billiard balls. They were just kind of a, a spherical hunk of matter that, that was fundamental and could not be divided any further. But as the early 1900s progressed, uh, people like Thompson, uh, Rutherford, Mosley, and Chadwick helped us to understand that atoms are actually made of smaller particles even than themselves, most notably protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, typically in a chemistry course, we stop at that point and we treat those particles as though they really are the absolute most elementary particles in the universe. But actually, we now know that's not true. You see, protons and neutrons are actually made of even smaller particles called quarks. And these quarks combine in groups of three to form either a proton or a neutron. And when we have two quarks that are up and one quark down, we have a proton. But when we have two quarks that are down and one quark up, now we have a neutron. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at these two particles. You'll notice that the down quark has a little bit greater mass than the up quark. And what that means is that when a neutron uh, changes into a proton and that down quark switches to up, that particle loses a small amount of mass. And that mass goes into the formation of an electron and a lot of energy. Now, the electron, of course, is what we're most concerned with during beta radiation. But there is actually an accompanying particle that is incredibly small and incredibly fast, almost moving at the speed of light. And that is the so-called electron neutrino. Uh, now, we don't normally concern ourselves with those because they're so weakly interacting and we, we generally don't have to worry about their, their effects when beta radiation takes place. So you may hear a little bit more about that. If you're interested in reading more about electron neutrinos, I would highly recommend that you check out the Fermilab webpage. They've got some really great short reads there that attempt to explain this. But again, we're, when we're looking at radiation from a more practical perspective, it's easier to simply think of a proton plus an electron equals a neutron. And so when these transitions take place within the nucleus of the atom, an electron is indeed created, so to speak, and shot out of the nucleus of the atom. And that's the beta radiation that takes place. So we're not losing electrons from the cloud of the atom, of course, that would simply be ionization. But rather, we're ejecting electrons from the nucleus in response to the change in composition of one of the nucleons. Well, I hope that helped a little bit. And I uh, hope that, uh, Ken, you got your question answered. And uh, everybody else, uh, if you're watching my course, please enjoy. If you haven't discovered it yet, I would love for you to just check it out at wondrium.com, search periodic table, and my course will come right up. You can also uh, learn more about me at chemsurvival.com uh, and check out my YouTube channel, Chem Survival, if you haven't already. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, take care and keep those questions coming. I'll be glad to answer them.